I recently mentioned that I have a chunk of dry ice from buying human organs off of the black market and the TikTok blew up, which is not what I wanted because now the FBI is gonna be on my ass. Cause this morning I was watching how snails make love when my MacBook camera turned on and usually it's just my FBI agent checking in to see if I'm doing okay mentally. But this time they messaged me and said, did you really buy human organs off of the- And I said, no, you dumb one that brain doo doo head. It's a TikTok. When have I ever made a serious TikTok? It's all just a joke cause I'm painfully bored with too much time on my hands and I just write down whatever comes to my brain and somehow people enjoy it. It makes me really happy. But then I read one hate comment and it ruins my whole week. And then my FBI agent told me, go to therapy. And I was like, damn, you're right. And I went to bed. Don't buy organs on the black market or your FBI agent will make you go to therapy. I just put a can of beans in the microwave. But little do I know, I forgot to take the beans out of the can. And now my mother freaking house burnt down. House burnt down. And now I don't have anywhere to live. Where to live. Today, as I was driving, I saw the most precious old man dressed up as Santa, and he was standing on the street corner waving at cars as they went by. So I parked my car, and I went up to him, and he was giving out free candy canes. I thought that was so nice, so I grabbed the whole basket, because I was really hungry, and they were also free. And as I was running away from him, I heard him call me a ho-ho-ho or something. But anyways, I got into my car, and I ate all the candy canes, and they were so delicious. But that's when I noticed that the basket said, Salvation Army Donation Bin, and I was like, Army? I I didn't know Sam streams BTS. But then I saw there was a bunch of money at the bottom and I started to tear up because not only did Santa give me free candy canes, but it also gave me free money. So guys, from now on, if you ever see one of these in public, that is a bucket of free money just for you. So make sure you grab it and run. So I lost my debit card for the fifth time this year and the bank won't give me a new one. So I went to Foot Locker today to sell my feet pics because I'm completely broke. And after looking everywhere and asking an employee, I could not find the locker full of feet pics. And I thought this place is such a scam. Why would it be called Foot Locker if there's no locker where people can buy feet pics? That's when I had the realization I can make my own Foot Locker and sell my feet pics on the side of the road. I started by holding up an iPad with some samples, but people kept driving by and no one bought any. But you know what they say, baby? Work smarter, not harder. So when I got home, I started making a sign that said feet pictures three dollars So I painted it real nice and then I hit the streets again And when I got to a busy street I taped the iPad to it with a Google slideshow playing of my feet and I waved it around a bit more But even that wasn't working so I had to do what I never thought I'd do. I seductively took my shoe off and then lowered the sock off my foot. And then I started waving at people driving by with my feet. But it, it, it was too much. I ran home and felt so dirty and unwanted because no one wanted my little big. So TikTok sent me a skateboard and I decided to ride it down my stairs so I could see a Juice World concert. And you're probably wondering, how did I get one? And it's because I used my Russian hacking skills to make me the most followed person by changing my follow count from 6.7M to a B. To the B, M to the B, M, M, M. With a brick, it didn't come with wheels. And I was like, what the heck? I was supposed to hang it on my wall. But I have trauma from last week when my stop sign fell off my wall and almost chopped me up in a cooked sashimi. So I decided maybe I can ride it down the stairs, but I don't want to meet Michael Jackson. Wait, never mind. Michael Jackson's in hell. <laughs> So I put on my frog costume from Halloween, but not only is it a frog costume, it's an inflatable frog costume. So I started at the top of my stairs and I slowly nudged myself forward until I wrote it down and... So anyways, now the board is snapped in half, but I got this cool new brew, so if anyone could give it a fun name, that would be greatly appreciated. Ever since Trump got banned off of every social media platform, <laughs> I actually discovered the last way that he's been able to whine to his little Trump stands since he can't be on Twitter anymore. And you're probably wondering, what is it? Well, last January, my number got leaked online, and someone took my number and gave it to the Trump campaign. So they've been sending me nonstop texts, emails, and calling me like once a week. Oh, to support Donald Trump. And whenever they call me, I, um... Politely decline. Anyway, since he's been banned, it's been real quiet. Until one day, I was drinking Red Bull out of my frog mug on the balcony when a piece of paper hit me in the head from the sky and I saw a carrier pigeon flying away. Anyways, I looked at the note and it was a note from Trump himself saying he's bored and losing his job and needs $50. <laughs> so you know what I did? I went looking for the perfect pigeon to send back to the president of the United States and I found a strong young pigeon with just a dash of rabies. I showed it a picture of Trump, pointed it in the direction of the White House, and I said, fly, baby, fly. Today, I hiked up to the Hollywood sign, but there was a fence blocking access to it, so I committed a little bit of a crime, and I managed to get through and I changed the sign to Holly Boo by covering the W with a B for Boo. Anyways, I was walking down and I saw helicopters flying overhead and I was getting kind of nervous, so I ran into the bushes and I hid from them because apparently I was on government property, or whatever that means. Anyways, I got an emergency alert on my phone and when I checked, it said that there was a $2 million bounty for a six-foot man in green, so I realized I'll have to live off the grid forever in these bushes, with my only food being Lady Gaga Oreo that 
that I brought as a snack. Anyways, I managed to sneak away to a swamp, but I heard the choppers getting closer. But that's when I looked in the distance and saw none other than a six foot man in green in the swamp. I had to act fast, so I grabbed my phone and I dialed 911 and I ratted on Shrek. Anyways, Shrek was arrested and charged with eight felonies and I got a two million dollar reward. So now I'm rich and I bought a mansion. Thanks, Shrek. I was making sushi with raw chicken instead of raw fish, but I accidentally dropped it on the floor. And when I bent over to pick it up, I saw my legs and wondered if I could wax them so they would feel like two slippery hot dogs. So I canceled my chicken sushi and once I was done cleaning it all up, I went to my garage to find a bottle of Gorilla Glue to wax my legs. But here's the big old catch. I can't make a single noise waxing my legs because if I wake up my dog, she will literally pee herself in the beanbag chair. So with that in mind, I grabbed some plastic wrap and put the glue on it and made a little waxing strip. Then I knelt down and put the strip on slowly and at first I was like, this isn't too bad. It just kind of feels kind of numb. And then it started burning and I realized I had to do it now. So I ripped it off and it didn't get the wax off. I panicked and I tried to wipe it off, but it just shredded the paper towel and got even stickier. And also my dog woke up and peed herself. But at least the sushi was kind of fire. My dearest Mima once told me, the circle of life is everywhere. That's why today I'm using her ashes to season my baked salmon for supper. I get all my seafood fresh from the sewer drain behind my local prison, because my uncle taught me when I was a young boy that if you take headphones with a phone attached playing Ed Sheeran and leave them by a sewer drain overnight, the fish in the sewers will sewer side. And when you check back the next day, you'll have plenty of fish ready for the lunch. Now, I'm not using any seasoning other than Mima herself, because I'm half white and my Mima told me that seasoning is the devil. Plus, the fish is already marinated in toxic chemicals to give it a little bit of a kick from the sewer runoff. I throw it in the oven at 400 degrees, and once it's done and I take it out, I finish it with a few more ashes. And then I finally take my first bite. <coughs> <coughs> so it looks like I have Mima stuck in my throat from the dryness, so instead of her ashes getting spread at Disneyland, they're getting spread in this toilet. Bye, Mima. Last night I went to Chuck E. Cheese to lie and say it's my birthday to get free pizza. And it worked, baby. But the place was terrible fine and the food was even scarier and after a few bites I started feeling sick like I had worms in my stomach so I got up and I stumbled out of the restaurant and I went home then the next day I scheduled an emergency zoom doctor's visit and he told me that I'm lactose intolerant and I was like what the hell I don't lactose I got all 10 baby but then he told me to put my feet away and I was like you're right you should be paying me for this not the other way around buddy and then he started telling me you can't eat pizza anymore but his video started to cut out but it's okay cuz I know what lactose intolerance is I can't have bread anymore so I got rid of all my bread and dumped all of that fart food right in the trash. And then I grabbed some milk and chugged nothing but pure milk for a few days. And you know what? It was really good for a bit until I started feeling a storm brewing ten times stronger than what Chuck E. Cheese did to me. So I immediately ran to the bathroom and... So apparently lactose intolerance is the milk one, but at least I don't lactose, baby. So I was going through my local Taco Bell drive-thru when I saw some money had fallen out of a customer's car in front of me. So I pulled up to pick it up and it was $200. And at first I was like, whoa, Canadian money actually does smell like maple syrup. But secondly, they probably need it. I should really leave it behind for them. Psych, bitch. I went to Michael's to spend $200 on crap. Cause last time I went to Michael's, I was like a toddler with like three Robux in my bank account. So I walked in and I decided to buy whatever looked cool. I found one of those kits where you break open the geodes. So I grabbed one of those and then there was a bunch of fake fruit. And I saw they had fake bananas, so I bought a fake banana. But when I went to pay, the cashier found a bite mark on my banana and asked me if I still wanted the bitten banana, but I bought the bitten banana anyways. And then when I got home, I broke the box open cause I don't own scissors. And look, it came with these fun goggles. Uh, anyways, next I went to my garage to find a hammer and then I put the geode on the ground and smack and that baby blew open and it looks kind of like a fruit gusher so um please let me know in the comments if i can eat these or not thank you bye you bring the corsets we'll bring the cinches no one wants a waste over nine inches so but the makeup contains lead poison at least your complexion will bring all the boys in since it's now 2021, that means that the Global Panda Express is officially over. Oh, wait, I was just kidding. I meant the global pandemic is officially over. Now you might be thinking, how is that possible? Well, two weeks ago, I cured coronavirus by filling a bottle rocket with hand sanitizer, and I sent it into the atmosphere. And for the past two weeks, the hand sanitizer has been spraying into the air, and people all around the world have been breathing in my vaccine air. Now, to test my theory, I decided today to see if I can find any pesky COVID germs lying around. So I went to the gas 
gas station and I licked the debit keypad and then I licked my fingers after typing in my pin, which is one, two, three, four. And then after that, I went to Panda Express and I enjoyed some yummy shrimp. But when I was driving home, I felt the COVID-21 germs from licking the gas station keypad bubbling in my stomach and I went home and I fell to my bed and I started coughing when all of a sudden I coughed up a piece of Lego, but I kept coughing and eventually I had enough Lego pieces of a little Lego house. So maybe COVID-21 isn't that bad. Valentine's Day is in exactly one month and I'm not letting you be sad and single like me. So I made a list of three ways you can easily get a bang. The first and best method is to search up their Spotify or Apple Music and look at what their top songs are. And then you can take their top songs and put it on your story and pretend like you have the same music taste. Then they'll see it and you can tell them, why yes, I love a pilot's license by Olivia Mosquito. The second method is to buy a billboard asking your crush out, but that's kind of expensive. So finally, the third method is to post TikToks in front of your house, making sure the street sign is visible in the background. Then when you get home, I just like to leave the door unlocked and post things that would really attract some new friends. This will invite plenty of new people to come to your house and meet you. Like there's this mysterious hooded figure that took all my stuff yesterday. I considered it a Valentine's gift from me to them. And I think we might have a spark between us. I was at a huge party with all my friends, but they aren't really fun. Except for you, Bob. And I was wishing I had a fun skater group to hang out with. So I decided to grab my passport. Not that passport, but my Cinder passport. It lets me see and match profiles from across the world for free. And now I have a whole group of friends and I don't need these bozos anymore. Now the only thing I need is a good skater fit. I was microwaving hot chip ravioli and sitting by a fire that I started in my living room when I started longing for someone to share the meal with. But then my eyes caught the word Tinder. I dropped my ravioli and grabbed my phone to download Tinder. And I made a profile to show off my personality and my love for food. After I added some pictures and finished my profile, I was gonna run some ranch dressing through my coffee maker to see what would happen. When all of a sudden my phone went off and when I grabbed it, it notified me that I had a match. Ever since then, we've been talking nonstop and we're gonna go on a picnic tonight and see who can dislocate their jaw the furthest and fit the most apples in their mouth. Anyways, wish me luck on my date. So my dad loves mangoes, so for Christmas, I got him a single mango from Walmart as his Christmas present. But I couldn't just wrap it because it would be obvious that I got him a mango like everyone else does for Christmas. So I grabbed my wrapping paper and I wrapped it as something completely different and then I put it under the tree. But a few weeks had passed and it started to smell really bad and when I checked it, the mango had molded. So I had to throw the whole freaking present out and wrap a brand new mango. But I had run out of wrapping paper, so I got in my car and I drove back to Walmart and I found a tube of basic wrapping paper. And then I pretended it was a sword and I was swinging it around but I accidentally killed a minion. Anyways, then I was bored in line, so I screamed into it like a horn and I said, Arby's, we have the meat. Anyways, I got home and I cut up the mango. I grabbed a random DVD case and I put all the mango slices in it. But my dad's cat tried eating it. Ugh. And then I wrapped the Lego Star Wars for Xbox 360 disc case and put it under the tree. And when I woke up this morning on Christmas, I gave it to him. What the? Today, I was in the drive through line at Starbucks trying to get the Donald Trump drink, which is just a cup that's full of sad old man tears. But as I pulled up, I was feeling generous, and I told the barista, can I pay for the order in front of me? And the Starbucks employee said, that's so sweet. Let me bring that up for you. Would you like anything else? So I said, uh, can I get a cake pop and a white hot chocolate? But that's when the barista said, that comes up to $94.24. I stopped and said, what in the star f did you say? And the barista told me they ordered seven drinks, four pastries, and a travel mug. So I told the barista, hey, um, I'm actually just getting at the kick box. But the person ahead of me had already driven away and they told me I had to pay or the cops would be called. So I pulled up and paid, but I wasn't gonna stop until I got my travel mug. I followed the car until it parked and I approached the window and I said, give me the mug. Anyways, look at my $94 Starbucks travel mug that I had to pry out of a sucker mom's hands. So I've always wondered what would happen if you put a Tide Pod in your dishwasher instead of like the dish soap pod thing? Like, would it explode or like what would happen? So today I decided to sacrifice my Android phone to record and I turned the flash on and put it in my dishwasher and then once it was recording inside there I closed it up and started the dishwasher on the low cycle But after a few minutes it started shaking a lot and I noticed that there was water leaking and dripping out the bottom So I panicked and I canceled it and I opened it up and I took the phone out and somehow it survived and was still working So I played the video to see what happened and Every time you're not running and cheering gets closer I was sitting on the floor eating a Rice Krispie snack when my dad randomly came home with a dog. We don't have a dog. We have a cat. So what is that? And I said, did you just buy a dog? And my dad told me he just bought a dog. So um, I guess I have a dog at my dad's house now. And I went to go pet it, but it keeps running away from me and looking at me like I'm a demon, which I am. <laughs> but it still made me sad. And I was sitting around trying to figure out how to become friends with this baby dog. And then I realized I could probably give it something like a treat. So I got off my butt and I went upstairs and I looked in the pantry and found some dog bones. I opened up the package and grabbed 
grabbed a bone and then I slowly approached him and placed it on the mat. But then my dad's cat Luna got in the way. Oh. Anyways, I gave it another bone and <laughs> it bit my hand so hard like three fingers fell off. I had to call an ambulance. Just kidding. Uh, he let me come near and when I touched him, he twitched and it scared me a little bit. But then he let me pet him. And now we're almost besties and I took him on a little walk and took some cute pictures with him. So if you want to see more of Sammy, I posted the pics on my Instagram at Ben of the Week. Okay, bye. So it is currently just <laughs> And the pandemic has gotten on my last nerve. So I bought a coronavirus vaccine off of Wish.com for only $20,000. And I had to wait two months for it to come. But then it finally arrived in this huge crate that I could barely lift up the stairs. But I opened up the box and I pulled the vial out. I wasn't sure how to take it, but I wasn't going to use a needle because I am needleophobic. So I put some of it in my juice bottle and I drank it and I was feeling pretty okay. And I went to go test it out by licking as many public surfaces as I could for an hour straight. Then as I was walking home, I started to feel a little dizzy. And when I finally got home, I double-checked the packaging, only to realize they had sent me a vial of Obama bathwater. And there was no vaccine. I took the vial and flushed it down the toilet, but then I remembered, oh, uh, you can't flush glass down the toilet. And then I heard a bang, and I ran outside to go see what it was. And all the pipes had exploded on my street, and there was doo-doo water everywhere. And I had caused a disaster. But the one good thing was, I saw Remy the Ratatouille floating on a piece of cheese. And I said hi, Remy, as he sailed off into the drain. Today I pretended to be in the hospital to get my celebrity crush to notice me. And here's how I did it. First I was editing my name onto a hospital band and one of the rows said sex. So I said yes, winky face. <laughs> and then I walked over to my printer that I haven't used in years and I thought it was gonna light on fire and somehow that old mama worked and it printed out my band. So I cut it out and put it on my wrist. Drip my drip my drip, yeah. And then I tore my bed apart and I ripped the bed sheet off my bed to wear as a little hospital robe. Then once I had that, I pulled my bed off and dragged it over to a blank wall. <laughs> Anyways, then I made my room look like a hospital by taping hospital signage. And then I laid down in my hospital bed and I made the finishing touches with a phone charger. And then I put some headphones in my nose to really pull it all together. Then I finally took my Snapchat and I added a black and white filter to be all dramatic. And I made the caption, down bad, wish I had a big booty B to give me CPR. And I sent it to her. Then I ripped all the cords out and the bracelet too and I put my shirt back on. And I was waiting around when she she finally replied and when I opened it she said Okay, so I found some weird Tic Tac looking things in the bathroom that weren't mine. And I was pretty bored, so I ate them all. And I felt like I was in the show Euphoria. Stranger. But I thought they would be tropical fruit flavored, but they were very much not. And I started wondering what they actually are, and I looked in the drawer where I found them, and they were growth capsules? I was confused, but I got super excited, because I want to be eight feet tall and stomp on all the people that walk slow. And just cower over everyone stomping on it. Oh, wait, they're actually, um... Foam animal pills that grow in water? I I started freaking out because I can barely digest Taco Bell, so I don't think I can digest that. And I grabbed a bunch and put them in water to see what animal was growing inside me, and when I pulled the foam out and looked at the diagram, uh, it was a horse! And you know what? I embraced it. I became my true calling of a horse boy, and I put on my four shoes on all four of my hoofs, and then I played every horse's favorite song right now, and I ran off into the world to start a new life. Day, one day. So I have a chunk of dry ice from buying human organs off the black market, but I was thinking, how do you even get rid of dry ice? Like, it doesn't melt, because it's literally frozen air, and it repels water, which means it's homophobic. Oh wait, I mean hydrophobic. Anyways, I'm clinically stupid, so I broke a piece in half and plopped it in my toilet to see what would happen. I'm just making these fun little bubbles, so I filled the bathtub and grabbed the rest of it and threw it in some water to see what would happen. And anyways, that was a mistake, because I filled the whole shower up with gases, and I remembered it's not frozen air, it's frozen CO2, and I was getting lightheaded, and I wasn't trying die. So I took the piece out and I brought it to the sink and I jammed it down the drain as best as I could so it would go away. And then I took a deep breath of relief until I looked down to see I was standing in a puddle of water and boom, my pipes exploded. There was water spraying me everywhere in the face. I got everywhere. Anyways, uh, I may have caused a catastrophic water main failure in my whole neighborhood and flooded 102 buildings. So, um, I don't think the vegan chicken nuggets were worth it. Hi, here's how you can save the Arctic in less than a minute. There's a place called the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. It is one of the last places in the U.S. Arctic where in danger Injured animals such as polar bears, caribou, and over 200 species of birds are protected from humans. Trump's administration could open up this piece of public land and sell it for oil and drilling by January 6th. Now the Gwich'in people
people have been living on this sacred land for decades. This land is home to them and they will be irreversibly harmed along with all the other wildlife that live there if we let this happen. So here's how you can help stop that in the time that it takes to watch a TikTok. Please go to protectthearctic.org. The link is in my bio on both Instagram and TikTok. Just write your name, email, and it'll send a message to the US Fish and Wildlife Service. And hopefully with enough of these messages, we can prevent the sale. The Arctic is already in the worst shape that it's ever been before because of climate change. We will be the generation that's affected by climate change the most. We can do our part to fix this. So please do this quick action, push for sustainability in your daily life. And that's all for now. I love you, bye. Today I woke up and grabbed my phone and text my friends, good morning, bestie. But instead I chose violence today. And out of the blue, I Snapchatted my friend, I know what you did. And then I had added her on Snapchat because I wanted to see her anger level. Then I put my phone away and I went upstairs to make lunch. And while I was getting the ingredients to make some delicious chocolate nachos, my phone started blowing up, but I didn't look at them because I was microwaving my chocolate nachos. And then once the nachos were done, I sat down and I enjoyed them. And then I went to the sink and I washed my plate. And then I decided it was a good time to assess her anger levels. So I checked my phone and she had said, Yeah, I told everyone you're an ugly ass, annoying ass, smelly, especially smelly ass bitch with a dog that looks like a raw chicken breast that you could boil and use the eye crust as seasoning. Lose my number. So anyways, um, I don't have my best friend anymore and I'm going back to bed. I was so bored today, I Googled myself and I noticed there was a tab saying Ben of the Week Heights. And it said that I was 5'7", which is slander because I'm six feet tall. Look, I literally measured it. I am six feet tall. Like I can drop my phone with a caseify case for my head and it survives. Not only did my phone survive with my caseify case, but the case is super fun too. They have lots of different designs, which are super fun. And like, look, here's Dula Peep with hers. Look at me, my twin Dula Peep. But I have this fun shipping label one, which I tried putting in a mailbox once, but then I realized it's not a real shipping label. It's just a case and I had to fish my phone out of the mailbox with tongs. Anyway, I highly recommend getting one since I see some of y'all raw dogging that iPhone with no protection, no case, no nothing. And they come in super fun packaging and have free little sanitizing wipes for you stinky mamas. Anyways, you can get 20% off with code 20HIGHBEN. Okay, bye! So today was April Fools and I got a doorbell notification, which I thought was strange because I'm not expecting any packages. And when I checked it, I saw a box sitting outside my house. I was like, what the heck is a baguette? That sounds like the opposite of a, you know what I'm talking about. Anyways, I picked it up and brought it inside and realized it makes vegetable pop. Pasta. And I was so excited, so I opened it up, but there was no vaghetti. There was just my hair. And I started panicking because I was like, how did they get my human hair? And that's when I realized that a month ago, I cut my own hair and put it online as a real Michael Jackson wig and sold it to someone for $5,000. But they probably got my address from the return address on the package. Anyways, I looked in the hair and found a note saying I need to lock my door because... <laughs> I dropped my phone almost as much as I was dropped as a baby. Like, I think it's actually made of butter. I basically have a butter phone. Phone with a butter. Anyways, I really needed a case for it, but I wanted something special. So I used this app called Caseify to make a custom case with every picture of frogs that I have in my whole camera roll. And it was really easy. I just took a little frog with a little leaf. Beep, bop, boop, bang, he's on the case. I took a picture of a frog with a little watering can and beep, bop, boom, he's on the case, baby. Then every other frog grabbed it. Ding dong, the package was at my door. And I was so excited because getting packages is like my number one source of serotonin at this point. And when I opened it, the packaging was like a little present from me to me. Because I have no one special to me to give me presents with. Anyways, I love my little frog case and you can make your own and get 20% off with the code 20 high Ben. Thank you, Case 5. Okay, so I bought one of those things that lets you FaceTime your dog and shoot treats at them. But today I was looking at the camera and I noticed that she's been taking all her treats behind the couch for some reason. So I went to go see what she was doing with them and um, she's been storing them so that she can pretend like I never gave her one in the first place and then ask for more like the fat little bitch she is. And yes, I can call her that because bitch means female dog and she is a female dog. Anyways, I had enough of her scamming me. So I decided to empty out the treat machine and fill it with her least favorite treat. Green beans, baby! I put a bean on the plate and cut it up into small little pieces, and then I loaded it into the machine, and I shot it out at her, and at first she didn't want to eat it, but then she got bored, and she ate them, and I was so happy, because I thought I got her on a diet, until I heard a weird coughing noise come from downstairs. I ran downstairs to see what was happening, and that's when I saw her in my beanbag bed, next to the beans when she had the I know I got beans in my bed!